Hi there. We are going to talk about electrochemistry. So this is redox that we will be talking about electrochemical cells, the potentials and also the standard reduction potentials and calculation of E cell. So let's begin with the periodic table. That's my simple periodic table. So you have the ladder. So uh, the nonmetals in the upper right corner, right for reduction. Okay, nonmetals do reduce. Upper right for reduction, nonmetals do reduce. So, what are the nonmetals? Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, oxygen, nitrogen, things like that. Okay, now, so we can look at the other side. Well, you can symbolize actually the nonmetals like a, they have a hole. They are they are begging for electrons. They are really poor in electrons. They need electrons. So that's what the nonmetals. Look at the other side. The majority of the periodic table, the metals. Metals do oxidize. Okay. So that's lower left and. Uh, mostly lithium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, right? And they do have few electrons to give away. That's what they're doing. See, you kick out an electron from lithium, it becomes lithium plus. Now, um, the whole, the non-metals grab that electron and they become happier, right? So this process is called the reduction. So grabbing an electron is a reduction that's happening in the upper right. And then who gives the electron? Something, the metal lithium, right? So that electron being passed into the um, non-metal. So the giving away electron is oxidation in green. So this whole process, push an electron from one to the other, that's through a conductor. That's we call the electricity. Passing electrons is electricity, right? So electrons are flowing through. Now this is also called the DC, remember direct current. The electrons are moving from one direction only, only to one direction, from one to the other, from metals to the non-metals. Okay, so that's, uh, that's something to memorize. Let's simplify. We do, chemists like to write it this way. Lithium, lithium goes to lithium plus, kick out an electron. That electron goes to the fluorine because fluorine has seven electrons, one missing to be octet, grabs that one. But these twos are just to balance the equation, right? Because we want to write things right. Fluorine exists in um, F2 actually, right? So just to balance that one. Now, so this process is loose electron is oxidation. I call the Leo the lion. Grrr, right? The Leo the Lion, grr. That's actually grrr, right? So Leo the Lion, grr. Gaining electron is reduction. So losing electron is oxidation. Leo the Lion, grr. Gaining electron is reduction. So that's a good way to remember. So the nonmetals, grr, right? And metals, Leo. Okay, so. Uh, we can move on to the other line. So use the capitals. It's uh, it's the the two terms are important, right? Now this process also called the redox reaction. See, GER is reduction, Leo is oxidation. Together, it has to be combined by a wire. That's called the redox reactions. So there's another way you can understand. That is something called the oxidation number. This one I think simply like the number line that you know. So the number line, you can you can kind of start with minus 3 to plus 3. I mean, you can go on either direction, right? But what's the point here? If you do gain an electron to fluorine atom, it will become fluoride. That's minus, right? If you get two electrons to the oxygen atom, it will become O2 minus oxide. So these are popular reactions that we know all the time we use and we use it in the questions. The other one is calcium. Look at calcium. Kicked out two electrons and that becomes calcium 2 plus, right? So these are the colors are meaningful uh, in, in my writing, okay? And um, 
the reductions are red and the oxidations are green. But also remember, variable oxidation numbers that can vary mostly from Roman 1 to Roman 7. Uh, but the popular ones you're going to see copper 0 going to copper plus going to copper 2 plus. And also uh, iron 0 going to iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus. Now you can check with this number line or oxidation number line as I call it. And you can see which direction the electrons are losing or gaining, right? Okay, uh, we, we can use more later on in the in the um, balancing reactions. We're going to use the oxidation method, the oxidation number method, right? Now let's look at simply electrochemical cells. This is the misconcept. Some of the videos I have seen, people don't really see that properly. So look at this one, electrochemical cells. Simply, it's a battery. It's a direct current source. It's also galvanic. He's the one invented first. So it's galvanic cells. And the other type is actually, uh, these are called the electroplating. You all understand plating nickel, chrome, and so on, right? And gold. And the other one, electrolysis. That's how we produce chlorine and other things. Now, in the first set, it's chemicals making electricity. We use chemicals to produce electricity, right? The electroplating and electrolysis actually use electricity to make chemicals, like make chlorine gas, right? So that's what it is. So those are the two different things. We're going to be only focusing on the batteries, the DCs, the galvanic today. That is chemicals giving you electricity. Let's see how the chemicals can give us electricity. That's actually, again, going back to Leo the line, right? OK, so let's take a beaker, throw a piece of um, rod of zinc, a zinc metal. And these two together, um, we also need another beaker and maybe a piece of copper, a rod of copper. And when you put these two, and we also need an electrolyte. What's an electrolyte? Electrolyte is actually aqueous solution of nitric, sulfuric, um, even potassium hydroxide, something like that. They do have plus and minus cations and anions. That's the important thing. So all the cations and anions pass electricity in a solution. So when you put the zinc rod into that one, zinc goes into zinc two plus and two electrons are released. And the copper going into copper and copper two plus and two electrons are released. These processes are spontaneous. It's just going to do it just like that, boom, right away, because it's free and it's just going to do it. That's spontaneous, right? Now, that's not the only thing is going to happen. The sink is more reactive. Your reactivity series, you can look it up, and than the copper. But we have another sheet uh, later on, you're going to see the sink 0 into sink 2 plus. It's more powerful reaction. And uh, so that's also an oxidation. This value, electrode potential value, is minus 0.76 volt that I just copied from the SRP table. That's the standard redux potential. That's We'll talk about that later. But it's just a book value, right? For the copper, also, we can write this reduction potential. That means reduction reaction is 0.34 volt positive, right? Now, we always, these numbers are written in the reduction fashion. So the electrons are in your left, and it has a voltage value, right? Now, what I'm writing here on the top in the white, zinc is more reactive, like I said. It creates a lot of electrons and piled up in the zinc pole. This is makes a half cell of zinc and filled with electrons, right? The copper is a little less reactive. So copper makes a little bit less number of electrons filling into the rod. So that's just based on the reactivity series. But if I um, link these two with a copper wire, Maybe we can put a voltmeter, we can put a light bulb, right? And the electricity goes through, then then you can have the light bulb shining based on the how much electricity the DC current passed through. And your voltmeter will tell you how much is it, 
right? So that makes the two half cells together make a full cell. And this is the numbers I got it, like I said, from the SRP table. That's the standard reduction potential at 25 degrees. So don't bother about that. That's just copying the values from a data sheet, right? Now, let's write the reactions. The prominent reactions in the sink is actually because sink is reactive, going to go to sink 2 plus and have the potential of 0.76 volt positive because it's flipped, right? But the copper as it is, copper 2 plus gets the two electrons and it's 0.34 volt. Now, the electrons should be balanced based on the um, least common denominator. So you cancel out the electrons and you add the left to the left, right to the right, and add the voltage as it is. No multiplication for the voltages because these are standard values, right? Now we can say the zinc solid aqueous two plus of copper and goes to zinc two plus aqueous and the copper solid. So that's the overall reaction. That's the E cell reaction. So two half cells gave you one um, electrochemical cell. And this is called the cell notation. This is direction of the electron flow, actually. You see, zinc becomes zinc 2 plus, and there's a barrier in the middle, and then the copper 2 plus become copper. That's the cell notation or cell note, right? And we also need to know the cell potential. E cell is I call E red minus E ox. Okay, now E red is the reduction process and E ox is the oxidation process, right? We can look it up the values and we can put them there. Okay, so the values are minus 0.76 uh, for the oxidation and 0.34 for the um, reduction, right? So let's plug them the, in here. So reduction we identified GER and oxidation we identified Leo and copy the numbers from the table, right? And we can just stick it here, right? So, yes, you take the values. Uh, don't change the sign, just put, just plug in there as it is. See, within brackets, the minus 76 and plus 0.34, right? So all together, you will get the positive 1.1 volt. This is called the standard electrode potential for that cell, the two half cells together. That's why it's delta E. And it's also um, spontaneous. Any positive electrode value is a spontaneous reaction. Okay, another thing's happening. This copper two plus actually takes the electrons and deposit as copper metal. And the zinc side actually zinc is um, wasting it because zinc becomes zinc 2 plus and dissolved. So what happens, the zinc electrode gets skinnier and the copper electrode gets more fat, bigger, right? And the electrons flow from zinc to the copper, right? Now, so this delta G, when it is, eventually it's going to go to delta G is zero, which is the equilibrium according to Le Chatelier, and the system will be stopped no battery working here now. So we can do uh, this potassium nitrate K plus and NO3, it's called the salt bridge. If you put the salt bridge, you can delay the dying of the battery, right? Because we, according to the Le Chatelier principle, we can slow down that process. You can keep the battery running for some time. So that's the purpose of the salt bridge, right? Uh, just to summarize, the cathode, I, I, I kind of call it is catherine, cathode does the reduction, okay? The process never changes. Catherine, cathode does the reduction. That's also the GER and gets electrons and gets mass and gets cations and Catherine is a girl, right? Kind of, it's an easy way to memorize, right? Now it's easy. If you know about everything about cathode, then you can simply reverse all these things for the anode. Right? Okay, so Leo, that's the Leo process, oxidation, and then everything else on your left, cathode, is reversed in the anode. Thank you.